don't get to meet the president every day. Congratulations to the Fighting Falcons on winning their second straight and record 18th Commander-in-Chief trophy last season. They have something we want. There's only one way for us to get it. We have to take it back. One, two, three. Let's go. Today is the first step towards the honor, the glory, the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy. All up, Air Force has done it. Navy and Air Force, the rivalry continues. Colorado Springs bright and early on this Saturday morning, 9.30 local time, and a usual picturesque fall morning has given way to an early wintry setting. Temperatures well below freezing, and it is damp. Overnight snow and ice have not deterred these football fans, however. All warmed by the thought of Service Academy football. It's the Home Depot College Football on CBS. Navy meeting Air Force in the first leg in the race for the coveted Commander-in-Chief's Trophy. Navy head coach Ken Niamatololo making an emotional speech to his team moments ago. The only thing we need to think about, our motivation is our love for each other. That's it. Our love for each other. As you go out, guys, talk to our weed about emotion. I want you guys to play with emotion, but just channel it for one reason, for one reason only, to get the W, to get the W. That's all we got. Do your job defensively. Every snap, every defender, perfect eye discipline on every snap. Offensively, if you love your brother, take care of the rock. Last but not least, let's turn loose and have some fun. Let's let's go. Go. Love you guys. Brotherhood on three. Elam on three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Welcome inside our broadcast booth and welcome to CBS Sports Spiro Ditas alongside former Notre Dame star quarterback Steve Berline. Clearly emotions running high. The winner of this game in the driver's seat to take home the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy. And when you talk about Academy football, Spiro, it all starts with the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy. There's nothing more important. That is number one on the goal list for all these academies. Today is the first step for both of these two teams. Both clubs running that traditional service academy option offense and the quarterback, Steve Paramount. Well, the quarterback is the maestro and the, any, any option offense there is out there, They've got to be very athletic, but their number one priority is protect the football. Trey Miller has not done a good job with that for Navy this year. On the other hand, Connor Dietz has done a very good job. He's very consistent for Air Force. I think the advantage in the quarterback position has to go to Air Force today. Well, Air Force has reigned holding the Commander-in-Chief's trophy for the last two years. Navy trying to bring it back to Annapolis. The kickoff is next. Colorado Springs, 28 degrees below freezing, and it is also wet here. That figures to be a huge factor. And look at the weather back in Annapolis, 77 degrees, but we like this better. It's football weather here as we get you set for kick. Third member of our broadcast team is Otis Livingston. And Spiro, as you can see, the uh, Air Force has done away with their usual uniforms, going with an all-black stealth-inspired uniform just for today's game. If you look at the helmet, these black dots are actually stealth bombers, hundreds of logos all the way down to the chin strap on the back of the uniforms. No last names. B-2 Spirit or F-22 Raptors. And I'm sure that the fans hope that these stealth uniforms work and they can go into the end zone undetected four or five times. Otis, oh, thanks. Emotions running high, as you can imagine. Cadets from both the Air Force and Naval Academy have taken their seats. There is the head coach of Air Force, Troy Calhoun, graduate here in Colorado Springs, a man who knows the history of this rivalry better than anyone. Long history between these two academies, 45th all-time meeting. Air Force, as we mentioned, holding the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy for the last two years. Prior to that, it had been Navy holding it a Service Academy record seven straight years from 2003 to 2009. Navy winning the toss, selecting to defer, and so Air Force will take possession. This is the earliest start time to a game in the history of this stadium, dating back to 1969, 30 local time here. 
As we get you set here, Air Force coming onto the field with their offense. Take a look at our starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A. Connor Dietz. Been a backup here for three years, finally getting his chance to shine on the big stage. It backed up Tim Jefferson. Jefferson leaving the academy after last season as the all-time winningest quarterback in the history of Air Force football. They run that traditional triple option offense. The pitch taken by Cody Getz, the nation's second leading rusher coming in. Last week, 218 yards. And another victory for them, tackled made by Matt Warp. Take a look at the starters for Air Force up front. Khan's back after missing two games with Mono. You see the talent positions. Ty MacArthur has become the favorite target for Connor Dietz. They pick up nine yards on first down, second and short. And here comes once again the backup. That's Cody Getz inside Navy territory, inside the 45 down to the 44. A guy, Steve, who you know doesn't look like much at just 5'6", about 160 pounds, maybe soaking wet, but boy, can he move. Well, all he's doing this year so far, Spiro, is averaging about 170 yards a game. This guy is dynamite in a bottle. 22 yards on the pickup by Getz. And they are able to keep the feet moving. That's John Lee, the sophomore out of Bethlehem, Georgia. Here come the defensive starters for the Naval Academy. Henderson, Dabney, and Palale up front, the senior defensive end. Lieback and core features Drake, Bry French, Warwick, and Keegan Wexel, the senior and the heart and soul of this Navy defense. In the back end, it's Gaines, Bush, Ferguson, and Webb. Trevez Bush had been a question mark today, suffering a concussion. The Navy's lost last weekend at home to San Jose State, but he gets the nod today and has made the start. Rare pass here. Connor Dietz airs it out towards the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown. Drew Coleman on the reception, and go figure, an Air Force offense that has run twice as many times as they've thrown, taken a shot, and they jump out to a 6-0 lead. When you're talking about defending the option, Spiro, it starts with the safeties being disciplined in their eyes. They have to see the right things. They have to stay with their keys right there. With the good, successful runs of Air Force early in the game, the safeties got a little bit aggressive. That let Drew Coleman slip behind for the easy touchdown. Cody gets setting it up with a 22-yard run, and then it's Connor Dietz to Drew Coleman, the senior Texas native. 35 yards for the Air Force touchdown. Well, I want you to watch right here, Trevez Bush, the safety for Air Force, what he does, he comes up on the play-action fake, and that allows Drew Coleman to slip behind him for the easy touchdown pass. You see right there, just that one step up, that's all it takes, and look how it does not get any easier than that, Sparrow. Air Force, this game has started exactly as they would prefer to have it start. Navy, not so good, obviously. See the scoring drive, they cover 80 yards in just four plays and under 90 seconds. Drew Coleman, the senior, goes 35 yards on the touchdown. And we talked to both of the defensive coordinators, Steve, and they talked about eye recognition in defending these offenses, the triple option. And, boy, that split second, that one mistake, they'll make you pay for it. It's so easy to get caught up watching the ball and watching the running backs and everything. What the, what the safeties have to do, their keys are in the offensive linemen. If the offensive linemen set up for pass, that tells these guys they cannot step forward at all. Otherwise, they're going to lose, just like Travess Bush just did right there. Navy with Bo Snelson and Marcus Thomas standing back deep to return. As Air Force draws first blood early in this game, 13-31 to play. And in front of their home fans here. The Navy will quickly try to answer out past the 20, brought down at the 24-yard line. Connor Healy on the stop, Thomas on the return after a return of 19 yards. Take a look at the starting lineups for the Naval Academy presented by Chick-fil-A. The quarterback is Trey Miller, the junior from Marietta, Georgia. Malayan through the first four games, you see the issues that he has had. Ten turnovers, seven coming on lost fumbles. Huge issue for this club as this, this proud offense 
that has really put up some huge numbers the last couple of years has just been anemic. Gigi Green on the take on first down. Starters in front of Miller today. Paulson, Cabral, Fleming, Zuzik, and Vickers are the offensive front. Very young offensive line. Turner, Snelson, Copeland, Green, and Lynch are the backs and receivers. Marcus Thomas comes on for the first time after a five-yard pickup by Green on first down. Miller runs the option, turns the corner, diving towards that first down marker. Appears to be about a yard and a half short. Tackle made by Austin Nicholas. Starters defensively for Air Force. Champagne to Julio Fitzgerald. Means, Nicholas, Chambers, and Jones are the linebackers and the back end of the defense. Miller, Bat Spears, and Brian Lindsay, the hard-hitting senior safety for this Air Force defense. This is third and short. Miller not going to get it. He is buried in the backfield. Ryan Lindsay got there first. Well, look at Lindsay come up. The, 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 the advantage that Air Force has in going against Navy and vice versa, it should be both ways, is that these two teams are used to seeing the option. They know how to read the keys. They should be disciplined in their assignments right there. Brian Lindsay coming up and aggressively supporting the run. Great play to stop Navy and force the punt. Steve, this Navy offense shut out last week for the first time since 2006. 12-0 at home against San Jose State. And not trying to be cute, maybe a silver lining there is that they didn't turn the football over, giving some confidence for Miller. So Air Force gets it back, an early 7-0 lead here in Colorado Springs. Early stages, first quarter, Air Force up 7 to nothing. Time right now to take a look at our military appreciation moment presented by USAA. Congratulations to the Fighting Falcons on winning their second straight and record 18th Commander-in-Chief trophy last season. And if the past couple of seasons are any indication of what is to come, Coach Galhoun, we expect uh, the Air Force will be back here this time. Next year. Take a look at the hardware that these players are buying for today. And as you heard the president mention, Air Force a record 18 commander in chief trophies. They've won it two straight years, and right now up seven to nothing with under 12 minutes to play in this first quarter. First and ten from their own 22. This is Getz. Once again, first down yardage. Jordan Drake finally able to bring him down. But what a story this Cody gets. One of college football's surprise stories this year from virtual unknown, Steve, to the second leading rusher in the country. And this guy's gone over 100 yards in all four of his starts this year. He's gone over 200 yards in both the opening game against Idaho State and then last week against Colorado State. This is Dietz on the pass, first and 10, or out past the 40. It's caught by Chris Jordan, the senior out of Tennessee. And this is the guy now, when you talk about Cody Getz, 5'7", 170 maybe, but he runs fearless up there. He's not afraid to stick it in between the tackles, but if he gets a seam, he's going to get the ball, get the most out of it he possibly can, and that opens up the pass game for big plays. This is second and short. They keep it on the ground here, needed to get to the 44-yard line. And Steve, this Navy defense, all the talk about the struggles that Trey Miller has had in the offense, they have not allowed a touchdown in nine straight quarters. That's remarkable considering the circumstances they've had to deal with. Yeah, nothing, nothing too spectacular about the defense other than the fact that they keep opponents out of the end zone. They started the season off. You see Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator right there. They started the season off about as tough as you can start the season, going against Notre Dame in Dublin of all places, and then coming back home and having to go to State College, Pennsylvania, and play Penn State University. I mean, that's two tough games for one of the academies to start out with, and you look at what this defense has done since those two games have been pretty impressive. A couple of inches short here, so it'll be third and less than a yard. There's Buddy Green. I had a chance to talk with him this week. He marveled at what they've done here with this Air Force offense and all the different formations that they make you prepare for as a defense. When you look at the, the two offenses, Navy runs a traditional triple option, a wishbone, wi double wing tee, 
Air Force much different. They run some of that. They also run some conventional power sweeps. They run a lot of play action. Very hard to defend against because of the multipli multiplicity of the offense. Quarterback keeper appears as though he's got more than enough for the first down. As Dietz lunges forward, the senior from Columbus, Ohio. This is an up-tempo offense, so you will not see Air Force letting that play clock run down much at all. They, they like to snap the ball around 20 seconds at the latest. Coaches are signaling in plays from the sideline. Everybody's looking at the signals. They get up and snap the football. Cobb stays on the field, the senior. They line up in the eye formation set. They turn the corner again inside Navy territory. They appear to have enough yards for the first down. And this is just a conventional speed option. Connor Deitch is coming down and he sees the defensive end coming in to take this just Jordan Drake to come in and make a play on the quarterback. Easy pitch for Connor Dietz. Here's the pitch after the first down run by Getz. Inside the 40, that's John Lee, the sophomore. And like Lee here, they think he is one of their running backs of the future. Trying to get some valuable time behind guys like Getz and Wes Cobb. As he sets up the Falcons with a second and four from the 38. Matt Warwick on the tackle. Cobb taking right over center. With Air Force and Navy, two of the perennial leading teams in the country in terms of running the football. Navy has dropped down a bit, but Air Force leads the country. You see what they have done. Just incredible numbers. Almost 400 yards on average per game. And, and this is a Navy team that in the last 11 years has never been lower than six in the country. So a big drop off for Navy this year, but Air Force right where they want to be. This is third and two. Once again, it's Lee here. He's been a workhorse early in the game, trying to cut it back. Navy holding its ground. Matt Ward, the linebacker. And the senior able to get there first. The most important thing in defensive football, Spiro, is to have as many hats as possible get to the football. Navy does a great job, great job here of stringing the play out and making Lee have to get fight several different defenders to get to the outside, and they're going for it here on fourth down. Certainly four down territory with this op offense. Troy Calhoun not hesitating. We keep it over the center. Brom Hart has the first down inside the 30 and down to the 25. But this is the 15th time this year already, Spiro, that Air Force has gone for it on fourth down. And look at that hole right there. That is a big seam right there for the fullback to get through. Doesn't get much easier than that in terms of just a straight, simple, straight ahead fullback dive trying to pick up a first down. Hart, just a sophomore out of Alvarado, Texas. Last week made his first career start. Picks up nine yards in the Air Force first down. Beats on the pitch to Cody Getz. And Steve, you expect him to kind of run north and south, but he likes to take those hits. He doesn't mind it. He'll lower his shoulder, run over a safety if he gets the opportunity. But what's going on right now, Spiro, this up-tempo, I think, is really taking a toll. Remember, we're in Colorado. We're not in Annapolis. So the air is going to be a factor as this game goes along for Navy as well. He pick up six there, sets up a second and four. Nice little cutback by Getz. Inside the 15-yard line, finally tripped up by the cornerback on the play, Quincy Adams, the freshman out of San Antonio, Texas. Last week against Colorado State, this Air Force offense scored touchdown in their first four possessions, so off to a very good start here as well. Cody gets Brian hard line up in the backfield on first and ten. Nice defensive stand there. The tackle made by Cody Peterson, the junior. So, so far, Air Force shuffling those running backs in and out, giving this Navy defense multiple looks. And we take a look at the Verizon Red Zone, where Air Force has done so much of its damage. Hart and Lee in the backfield. They run the option and pitch taken by Lee, but he is going nowhere. Dumped down at the 10, Josh Tate, the Nashville native, able to get there first. You talk about the red zone, Spiro. This Air Force team, one of the very best in the country. Been in the red zone 21 times. This is now the 23rd time, actually 21 times, coming into this game. 15 touchdowns in the red zone out of 21 possible attempts. This is the 22nd attempt right here. But very few teams better in the country than Air Force. 
This is third and five. They need to get to the fourth. Pitch taken by Lee, and again he's dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. Josh Dowling Fitzpatrick among the tacklers. As Lee barely able to get back to the line of scrimmage, it'll be fourth and five, and Troy Calhoun will send out his field goal unit. Good defensive stand by Navy right there. Been a, been a long first quarter so far for Navy, but they stood up right there, forcing the field goal attempt as opposed to giving up the touchdown. Here's Parker Harrington among the best kickers in the Mountain West Conference. This will be from 27 yards officially. Harrington's got the leg, but it's no good. And Harrington, after a very impressive season a year ago, has been a bit of a disappointment this year. Yeah, this was never had a chance. He pulled it left right off the get-go. Ken Niamatololo will take it. Navy hanging close. Down 7-0. It's Service Academy Saturday on the CBS Family of Networks here on CBS Air Force Leeds Navy. And over on CBS Sports Network, it's Boston College and Army. Here's the Corps of Cadets marching on. And of course, don't forget, December 8th, be sure to join us for the Army-Navy game on uh, December the 8th. Now back to Spiro and Steve. Tim, thanks. Navy's defense holding steady. And after a missed field goal, the score remains 7 nothing. Boy, a couple of wild recent meetings between these two clubs. Last season, Chris Proctor in overtime punching it in to give the Naval Academy a six-point lead, but called for an unsportsmanlike penalty. They moved the point after back, blocked by Alex Means, and Air Force would take advantage, winning it. And just last second fashion on that point after attempt 35 to 34 in Annapolis and Ken Niamatololo told us Steve that that really was the turning point of Navy's season they never quite recovered they lost four straight after that and finished five and seven yeah they, they really reeled after that game they felt like they had fought their way back and put themselves in position to win that game and never got it back on track after that last year so Trey Miller back under center and Miller finds some room there he's got the first down nice pickup by Miller trying to just get through some of the fumble issues that he's had of late 15 yards and a first down this Trey Miller is a great athlete I mean when you watch him run the football when he protects the football he is a tremendous playmaker and he can also do it with his arm he's got a, a very strong arm can get the ball to field and that really is a concern to Troy Calhoun and his coaching staff as well because if they make a mistake this guy can make him pay. He's just got to protect the football. First and 10, they spot it just outside the 35. We mentioned the fumble issues that he has had. He's fumbled 10 times this season, losing seven. Three of those fumbles have come in the red zone in each of the last three games, including last week against San Jose State. Miller's seven lost fumbles, more than 99 Division I teams in college football. And it's just unacceptable. Trey Miller knows that. Coach Ken Niamatololo knows it. They've talked about it. It's been beaten over and over and over. And he knows if he doesn't protect the football, he's not going to be on the field much today for Navy. Second and eight, green in motion. Miller keeps it himself. He's got another first down inside Air Force territory, desperately trying to jumpstart this Navy offense. But how much of an issue is it? Well, this is the routine that is resorted to for Trey Miller. Pre-game warm-up, he's got a coach on his side all the time running around, cradling that football, trying to punch it out. And that's what happens because I guarantee you, when Air Force and any team playing Navy this year look at the film, their, their defensive coach is going to have a reel showing all the fumbles that Trey Miller has, and it gets these defensive players salivating more than they already do to try and get the ball on the ground. Darius State and Noel Copeland in the backfield. This is first and ten. Miller again keeps it himself. It's been a play that's worked so far. As he lunges inside the 35 for a pickup of eight. He'll get live score updates for all of your favorite teams with the new CBS Sportcaster app for iPhone and Android. Text score to 42777 and get the free app. You know what it looks like to me here, Spiro? 
Air Force is trying to make Trey Miller run the football. There's a lot of different ways you can defend the option. One of the first things that usually happens is that, uh, number one, you got to try and stop the fullback. But second thing a defense does, they put a man on the quarterback and try and make him pitch the ball. But they look like they want Trey Miller to run the football because of his fumble problems. Miller gives to Copeland on first down. They're able to bust it right up the gut. Nicholas finally brought him down, but not before Copeland goes for eight. And if Air Force does not stop Copeland, the fullback, that is the number one priority when you're playing a, a triple option team is you have got to stop that fullback. Noah Copeland, when he has big days, this Navy offense is going to roll. Copeland still just a sophomore, made his first career start in the opener on Dublin against Notre Dame. Huge day against VMI a couple of weeks back. And again, the Naval Academy gives him a different look. This is Marcus Thomas, the junior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And Steve, this is exactly the kind of possession and drive that they needed to get some of their confidence back. And this, though, is where Navy has to be careful because, as you said, Spiro, the last three weeks, they've had three fumbles by Trey Miller in the red zone. And you combine that with the fact that he's also thrown an interception in the red zone. That is not good. And he's got he's to show that he can handle these situations because the game does magnify when you get inside the red zone. That in line of the, red, of the end zone acts as a 12th defender. You have no room for air down here at all. Second and short, green in motion. Miller on the keeper again. Continues to run that option very efficiently. A fumble on the field. But the officials say down by contact. Ruling on the field as the runner was down prior to losing possession of the ball. Second down. Well, we can talk about it till we're blue in the face. Now, he, Trey Miller definitely was down on this play. The elbow hits. The ball pops out. Everything hit. No doubt he's down. But when those black shirts out there for Air Force see that ball popping out, I'm telling you, it just puts more of a bullseye on Trey Miller. Air Force's defensive coordinator, Charlton Warren, told us they talked about it this week. Practicing stripping that football away from Miller. As they are stuffed on uh, second and five, Prentice Christian, the fifth different running back we've seen for Navy, stuffed at the line of scrimmage. You know what this does, though? The history that Trey Miller, in this very short career as a starting quarterback here at Navy, the history of the fumbles and the turnovers really limits the play calling ability for Coach Ken Niamatololo. And we take a look at the Verizon Red Zone. Well, Navy has just not had much success. Huge play, biggest play of the day so far. Down seven, 32 seconds to play in the quarter. And this will be a third and five. Miller on a late pitch and green dump for a loss. Alex Means on a tackle. Well, you're gonna see number nine, Alex Means, just really plays this well. The penetration in the backfield on Trey Miller is what caused that problem, though, because they were doing, as we discussed earlier, Spiro, they were going to let Trey Miller run with that football. That's the end of the first Navy quarter. Maybe trying to get the field goal off. They won't as we reach the end of the first quarter with Air Force in front, 7-0. We'll return to Falcon Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the Home Depot College Football on CBS. Adidas and Steve Verline back with you in Colorado Springs 7-0 here as we start the second but Navy hoping that that long drive could kind of give them some confidence. Even just a field goal which is what I think they're going to go for here right now that's a big big improvement from what they've been going through the last few weeks. They have not scored any points in the first quarter in two or three games so this is really important to get something on the scoreboard make them feel as if they can play with these guys before the game is out of hand. This will be Nick Sloan, the San Diego native, true freshman, attempting from 34 yards. And now penalty markers will whistle the play dead before it started. 64, five-yard penalty, fourth down. And this is another thing that's been a very frustrating part of uh, Ken Niamatololo's life this year. This, the, the Navy team is generally one of the top two or three teams in the country 
in terms of penalties against. They have had way more penalties so far this year, averaging five penalties plus a, year, a game. That's a lot more than their average. Five-yard penalty pushes him back. It's a 39-yard attempt, plenty of leg, and it's good. So long drive by Trey Miller, stalls, but they salvage three at Navy on the board. Thirty-nine yard field goal by Navy's Nick Sloan gets the midshipman on the board. They trail the Air Force 7-3 as we welcome you back to Colorado Springs. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, Otis Livingston, our entire CBS crew with you from Falcon Stadium. Monday, the Broke Girls get robbed, but money isn't the only thing they lose. A new two Broke Girls, Monday, 9-8 Central, only CBS. Fourteen fifty-five to play, just underway, second quarter. Air Force had very impressive scoring drive to start. And we started to sense the doubts already amongst the fans here. You know, moving for Navy, that maybe you know, here we go again. A team that has really struggled so far, just one and three. Air Force with some real estate up the sideline. So excellent field position here, but again the turnovers Steve last year to this huge story Yeah, when you look at these area the turnovers They're already at their season total from last year almost three three more than they're there Rush yards per game way down penalties. They're well over halfway to their penalties for the total year last year And they're only four games in the season these numbers were coming into the game So those numbers obviously have changed as this game has gone along Cody gets on the take Another big start for Getz. He's rushed for 100 yards, Steve, in each of the first four games this season. And you just get the sense that every time he touches the ball, there's an opportunity for this thing to go a long way. He's not afraid for a little man to run over people. If he gets scored up on a safety, he's not going to shy away from that contact. And that earns the respect of his coaches and teammates. First Air Force player to accomplish that feat. Four straight 100-yard games to start a season. Here he comes looking for more. Close to the first down marker tackle made by Wes Henderson, the senior Pennsylvania native after a pickup of six. Now, what a story this young man has been. Last year, had to miss eight games with a stomach issue. Stevie dropped to 150 pounds. And there were questions whether or not he could even play. This is third and one here, huge play. They're able to pick up the first down and keep it going. Brown Hart. The sophomore got a chance to talk to Troy Calhoun. At one point, he brought Cody into the office and said, son, I don't think you can play. You should worry more about being you know, a guy who's going to finish through because there's such stringent physical demands of these guys. He said, forget about football. Focus on finishing, but get stuck with it. And here he is now, second leading rusher in the country. He's just one of those guys. He inspires people every step along the way. Go back as far back as you want. He's always been that guy. Connor Dietz brought down, able to salvage a yard on the play. But you look at where he stands now. Air Force led by this young man who stands at just 5'6", averaging better than 170 on the ground per week. And you know who deserves the credit for that young man being at Air Force is Charlton Warren, the defensive coordinator for Air Force, who really led the recruiting effort to try and get him to come here. He had to really go to bat big time for Coach Troy Calhoun and his staff to go along with bringing gets here. This is second and nine. Boy, Dietz says that play action so well. Lunging catch. Navy screaming from the sidelines that it was not a catch, but Drew Coleman has it. And a pickup of four. Well, let's see if this was a catch. A good hard play action that's one of the many different things that Air Force does. The pump fake, Cody. Con Con Connor Dietz never loses his poise or composure. That ball was close, but I do think that the hands were underneath before it hit the ground. Sets up a third and five here. They line up at the Navy 38. This is Dietz from the shotgun. Now to Getz on the pitch. Continues to take some hard licks by that Navy defense. Dowling Fitzpatrick got there first. After a pickup of five and a first down, looks like Getz is a bit shaken up as it comes off. Well, there's some popping going on down there. No doubt about it. 
But, but you can see every play that this Air Force team gets back in the shotgun. They line up in the wing T. So many different things they do. There's a fumble on the play. Navy has it. They pick it up. And Trey Miller back on the field. Travez Bush, who was born for the touchdown earlier, making up for it. And a critical turnover by Air Force inside Navy territory. This is an Air Force team that only has three turnovers on the season. And you're going to see it's a good, solid run, but the ball pops out. That was Brome Hart. The ball just popped out of there. And no doubt, no doubt out of there before his knee hit the ground. Just can't say enough about this Navy defense continuing to give their offense a chance. Tomorrow, doubleheader action. The NFL on CBS. First, the Browns battling the Super Bowl champion Giants. And then the big one, Peyton Manning and Tom Brady taking center stage. Denver in New England. It all starts with the NFL today presented by Southwest Airlines. Here in Colorado Springs, Brom Hart. You know, the costly turnover, fumbling. Very rare, as Steve mentioned, this Air Force offense that has rarely put it on the floor. Maybe now trying to take advantage. Down 7 3, 11 35 to play in the second. First fumble recovered, as you saw by Navy on the season. Here's Miller, the junior quarterback, taking on a hard hit. And brought down at the 47. Time now to go to the studio for a John Hancock update. All right, Spiro and Steve, uh, take a look at Larry Dixon first back through for the Black Knights of the Hudson. He's going to crash through on the belly series. 34 yards to the one-yard line to set up Trent Steelman for a one-yard plunge. Seven to nothing. Army over BC over on the CBS Sports Network. Back to you. Thanks, Timmy. You can see. Army running the same type of thing that these two academies do, the, 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 the triple option or some variation of it. If you don't stop that fullback, it's going to be a long day for you, BC. Army's really struggled this season. We saw them here last year, kind of falling behind in the race for the Commander in Chief's trophy. This is the first leg between these three service academies. They pick up four yards there with Copeland. And as the clock continues to run, Troy Miller desperately trying to get this Navy offense in gear. It's been their biggest issue so far this season. Navy off to their worst start in 10 years, just one and three coming into this game today. Miller on first and 10, calls his own number. Inside the 45, brought down at about the 43. And he took a shot in the ribs there. I, I really am sensing that this is what Air Force wants. They want Trey Miller running the football, and then they're going to try and punish him right there. You see the head in the ribs. That was Austin Nick. No, that was not Austin Nick. That James was Chambers. Chambers. James Chambers coming in and Maybe. hitting right with that face mask time in the out ribs. It's be a 30 second timeout. So timeout taken by the Naval Academy as they try to tend to Miller and the backup Keenan Reynolds. The freshman starts to warm up. As we mentioned, it's Service Academy Saturday on the CBS Family of Networks. All the Service Academies are on CBS or the CBS Sports Network. Boston College is inside the 10-yard line, so in the Army red zone. And right now, Stillman's touchdown is holding up a 7-0 lead there. Let's get you back now to Spiro and Steve. Tim, thanks. Keep you updated on that Army-Boston College game. Early 7-0 lead for Army. Oh, Trey Miller. Back in the season opener, injuring his left ankle after being sacked in the second quarter. He was noticeably limping afterward, but he did not come out of the game. And Miller has played in every game since. Boy, has he taken a beating. Here was the scene just moments ago taking a shot. Uh, James Chambers, the middle linebacker. Miller limping off the field. But uh, in true fashion, these guys so tough. And so durable, Miller will stay on the field and try to lead this offense. But Miller, you talk to the coaches and players, Steve, such a quiet guy. And the one part of his game that really needed to develop, being a vocal leader as the quarterback of his team. Uh, second and five, they give it to Copeland. 
Miller earlier this week on the practice field Monday got in front of his team and surprised everyone by addressing the guys and basically apologizing for his play, all the fumble turnover issues that he's had. We asked Ken Mianatololo if the players were surprised. He said, forget them. I was shocked that Miller got up and addressed the team. He, he had not shown any indication of, of that quality to this point in his career at, Naval, at the Naval Academy. And to step up, and they've been really, as you said, they've been harping on the step up and take a leadership role. To see that this week really, I think, impacted a lot of people. He's played well so far in this game. A late pitch, excellent decision to Gigi Green inside the 10. And finally forced out of band by Christian Spears. And they'll spot it back now at the 11-yard line. Apparently stepped out. And you're going to see Trey Miller took a shot right there as he pitched that football. But, man, he got it out there. And the quarterback, as we said in the open, has got to be the maestro. Look at the shot. Oh, right in the gut. But he gave his body up, made the pitch, and the result is a big play for Navy. Now inside the 12-yard the, the, the line, looking for a chance to punch in seven. This is a Navy team that has really, really struggled, not only with turnovers, but also just getting touchdowns in general. Only three times out of 12 have they got have they found favor. Green goes for 25 yards on that run. Here's Copeland right over center. Inches towards the five. Spears on the tackle. And as the clock continues to run, they pick up six there. With 8.31 to play before halftime. Coach Ken knows so well. And he's excited and fired up about what's going on right now with this offense. They need to see some life. But first down in an option offense, first down is the key. If you want to be successful, you got to make four, five, six yards minimum on first down and the defense at the same time. They know that if you can keep this offense in a second and third and long, the probability of them converting is very slim. Second and four, they spot it just outside the five. Here's Copeland lunging end zone. No signal yet. Touchdown. And the midshipman on enemy ground today, punching it in, and have taken their first lead. Watch the second effort by Copeland, how he extends the ball over the goal line after he stopped right there. That effort, just getting it over the goal line, tremendous effort from a young man that wanted to get that ball in the end zone. Copeland, the sophomore, the San Antonio native. Rolling on the field of a touchdown is under further review. So the replay officials will take another look at it. From our vantage point, initially it looked like he was clear as day over the goal line. I, I don't think there's a question, Spiro, about whether he was over the goal line. The question is, I think, whether his right knee was on the ground before he got the ball over the over the goal line. That question is that knee down or not? The ball clearly breaks the plane. I don't think that knee is down. He's on top of one of his teammates. So or the no, right shoulder, Steve, as he kind of lunges. You see that right shoulder. But the ball broke the plane before the shoulder hit, I believe. Call on the field is a touchdown, so they'll need conclusive video evidence to overturn. Yeah, I think that's going to be a touchdown. The question in my mind was whether or not that right knee hit the ground. And from all the angles that we had right there, it appeared as though no part of his body hit the ground before the plane of the goal line was broken. Well, if this touchdown stands, it'll give Navy a 9-7 lead with the point after pending. This is an offense that has averaged just 14 and a half points per game over the first four weeks of the season. Well, it, as Coach Troy Calhoun told us, throw the records out the window in this game. It doesn't matter. Everybody expects Air Force to come in and just run over Navy. But this is a service academy football game. They always go down to the wire. And Troy Calhoun knew coming into this game it was going to be a dogfight. Noah Copeland, one thing we also found out about him this week, black belt in karate. So not only do you want to not mess with him on the football field, taking him on head on, you sure don't want to get him on a, on a karate mat. Uh, I think he can do some damage there as well. I don't want to mess with any of these guys. No, I, I wouldn't either. These are multifaceted and tough young men. But, Steve, until you spend time here at one of these service academies, you just can't appreciate just how impressive these young men are. 
Rolling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Copeland can finally celebrate. And there are the cadets that have made the trek from Annapolis. Nick Sloan, the true freshman, will come on for the point after. Is good and the kick is perfectly through the uprights. So Navy with 10 straight points and the Naval Academy with its first lead. Timeout. Coming up on the Geico halftime report, Tim Brando, Tony Barnhart, and Aaron Taylor get you caught up on all the scores and highlights. Plus, they'll have a preview of third ranked LSU and the 11th ranked Florida Gators. It's all coming up on the Geico halftime report. Navy with its first lead, they go 61 yards, seven plays in three minutes and 40 seconds. Time right now for our Home Depot Tools for Success. Well, this is a Navy team that had only 70 yards on the ground last week at San Jose State. Not the case today, and the reason Trey Miller, quarterback, running the option to perfection, taking the hit, showing his toughness right there, getting back up, coming down the line, pitching the ball, taking another hit, and that's G.G. Green going for 25 yards, setting up the Noah Copeland reach for a touchdown. Very successful, productive drive for Navy. Great for their confidence. They believe they can win this ball game right now. Well, the junior quarterback so far has been the offensive catalyst. You see what Navy has done so far on the ground. Copeland able to punch it in for six. And the Navy team that had its seven-year reign holding that Commander-in-Chief's trophy ended by the Air Force two years ago, trying to bring it back to Annapolis. And they would take a huge first step in doing that if they can pull out a win today. The first, then will have excellent field position. They cut it out past the 35 to the 40. And finally brought down is Jordan Gazelle on a 42-yard return. Well, this is a tremendous job of executing by the Air Force kick return. Look at the hole that Gazelle has right there. He didn't even have to make a move. He just ran straight up the middle of the field and didn't even see a white shirt until he got to about the 35-yard line. Look at the seam right there. He makes one guy miss right there. Great move. But the, the blocking up front is what created that opportunity. First through 10, the Falcons trying to answer. This is Getz turning the corner. Pickup of seven yards. Tackle made by Bush. One of these safeties for Navy coming back from the concussion a week ago at home against San Jose State. Connor Dietz, this offense spending a lot of time on the sideline, that long extended drive by Trey Miller. This is second and three, fakes the pitch. Dietz throws, it's complete inside the 40. Catch made by Drew Coleman. It's 11 yards and an Air Force first down. Well, Air Force coming out and throwing on second down and short. You can see right there, I, I, Connor Dietz, if he had a chance to throw that again, he would have gone down the sideline. He had a man open down the sideline for a touchdown, but a good throw nonetheless. Pitch to Getz on first down. Getz again turns the corner, cuts back inside, and is brought down just short of the 20 by the linebacker, Bry French. One of the things that concerned Buddy Green, the Navy defensive coordinator, is the athletic ability of the offensive line for Air Force. Look at him get out and run and throw those cut blocks in front of Mr. Getz right there. He takes it down the sideline. He does the rest. They get him to the edge. He'll take care of the rest. Getz goes for 19. He's over the century mark for a fifth straight game. Let's go to Tim Brando and an update in New York. All right, fellas. Uh, Charlie Weiss has had a struggling quarterback in Dane Christ. So what do you do? Well, you make sure that you uh, run the football. K-State has come back, though, with John Hubert's 20-yard run to tie the game at seven. Back to you. Well, Timmy, Dan, Chris, Charlie Weiss together making their Kansas debuts. Air Force meet time trying to answer after Navy putting 10 straight points on the board. Trevez Bush getting able to come up from his secondary spot, make the tackle after a pickup of six. 
Take a look at the first three possessions. You mentioned the opening drive. They went 75 yards, but since that point, they missed the field goal, Steve, and then the fumble. Navy's defense starting to hold its ground. Yeah, Navy has bended, has bent, but has not broken so far today. They've come up with some big plays. Huge third and third. Put it on the ground again, and Navy has it. Ty MacArthur unable to corral the pitch, and Navy gets it back. It was Keegan Wetzel on the recovery. All the talk we've had coming into this game, Spiros, about Navy and their turnovers, especially in the red zone. This is the third for Air Force in the red zone. That was just Ty MacArthur taking his eye off the ball. Perfect pitch from Connor Dietz. Hits him right in the bread basket, but Ty MacArthur, I think he saw some white shirts in front of him, heard some footsteps, took his eyes off the ball just a little bit, and that's all it takes to make a huge mistake for Air Force. Here's Copeland on first and ten. So an Air Force team that had lost fumbles just three times all season long has put it on the floor twice in this game. The Troy Calhoun got to be concerned with the missed field goal and two fumbles in the red zone. That's uh, that's automatic points. This is an Air Force team that is used to putting seven points on the board every time they get into the red zone to come away three times with nothing is very abnormal. Injured player from Air Force on the field, so the officials will wrestle the play dead here. Nick Fitzgerald, their starting defensive end, now will be tended to by the training staff. But uh, it's been a role reversal so far. We started the day talking about the turnover issues by Navy. The two critical turnovers by the Falcons. Ten straight points for the midshipmen, and that's where we stand now. 10-7 with five and change to play in the first half. Nick Fitzgerald, the sophomore Texas native, seven games started a year ago as a freshman. And a lot of vital experience. Try to get an update as quickly as we can as he limps off on his own power. Trey Miller, the junior quarterback under center. GG Green in motion. Miller, the stiff arm. Or the shots he's taken, he just keeps lowering his shoulder and going right through the teeth of that defense. And this has been the story so far. The, 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 the hooked field goal by Parker Harrington, only one for five on the year. And then the first fumble by Broom. And then the second one right here by Ty MacArthur. Two big turnovers coupled with the, or combined with the missed field goal. And Troy Calhoun is not used to seeing any of that stuff. He knows his Air Force team needs to straighten up quick. Cadets from Air Force in attendance trying to rally the troops. This is third and five. Air Force holding steady. Nowhere to go straight up the gut. And pick up two. And it'll be fourth and about three. And Coach Ken, he he, he likes to go for it on fourth down as well. These, these option-style offenses are much more aggressive on fourth down in general, but with a 10-7 lead, backed up inside your own 30-yard line, the right call every time is the punt. Pablo Beltran will punt the sophomore kicker from Humble, Texas. Independent Special Teams Player of the Week. And a 57-yard punt in the loss to San Jose State last Saturday. Fielded by MacArthur at his own 35, going nowhere. Host the tacklers. Marcus Thomas gets there first for Navy. As Air Force down three gets it back when we come back. Tim Brando in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Tony and Aaron Taylor will uh, join you. Today's action will include this. How about Trent Stillman going for 27 yards? Surprise, surprise. Army leading Boston College. Now let's get you back to Navy and Air Force. Oh, what a story that would be, an Army team that is winless through the four, first four weeks. This is the first leg of the Commander-in-Chief's trophy, the all-time numbers. Navy, right in the middle of your picture. Air Force, of course, has won it a record 18 times and two straight. Ending that seven-year reign the Navy had between 03 and 09. It was the longest consecutive year in the history of the service academies. And right now, the Naval Academy quitting themselves well up 10-7, 3.38 to play here in a second. 
Deeps on the pitch to Cody gets another fumble. It's on the field, and maybe it looks as though has another forced turnover. And the, finally, the signal comes in. Navy gets it back. It's the third Air Force fumble. And that matches their number all season long. We're going to see who comes up with this, but there's close to a horse caller right there. Could have been called. And then the, the ball just popped out of there. Very slight touch, but Cody Getz wasn't, or Cody Getz wasn't ready. It was Josh Tate, number 41, who kind of grabbed him by the collar and then popped it out with his left hand. Tate, the sophomore out of Nashville, with a huge play as Air Force has fumbled it and lost it on their last three possessions. Yeah, you get the sense that Air Force is almost in shock right now. Fumbling can be contagious, and that is definitely the case today. Just ask Trey Miller. Once it starts happening, it's hard to stop the bleeding, and Air Force is finding out the hard way today. Great field position again for Navy. Quincy Adams, one of the seven true freshmen defensively for Navy on the recovery. Copeland absorbing that first hit on first and ten. So excellent field position here in Air Force territory. Tuesday on CBS TV's number one drama is raising the dead. And you won't believe who's in charge. Mark Harmon stars in a new NCIS Tuesday only CBS. Spiro Ditas, Steve Berline, Otis Livingston from Colorado Springs. 9.30 a.m. kickoff here at Falcon Stadium. And as we move on to three minutes to play before halftime. Navy at one point down 7-0, 10 straight points and have all the momentum. Miller inside the 30 to the 20-yard line and finally run out of bounds as this Navy offense dormant through the first four weeks. Finally starting to show some size, but there's a marker on the field. Miller goes for 26, but now we await the penalty. Well, I really question the uh, the Air Force decision right now. Today, coming into this game, they, they definitely wanted to have Trey Miller running with the football, I think because of the fumble problems, but he is a tremendous athlete, and he's making him pay right now. He's up getting close to 100 yards now on the day, and he'll take it every time. Personal foul. Offense number 21, low to the head. 15-yard penalty, second down. That's G.G. Green, the senior three-year starter for this Navy offense. It's a huge penalty and a gate, the 26-yard pickup. And again, very uncharacteristic for Navy. They're number one of the top penalty against teams in the country right there. Huge gain by Trey Miller I know, I know. and a very younger. irrelevant hit. You can see right there at the end, G.G. Green came in and took a, 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 a completely irrelevant shot. Coach Ken is telling him, you know what? That had nothing to do with the play. Appreciate the effort, but you were 20 yards behind Trey Miller. What are you thinking? That cost his team 40 yards right there, that penalty. Well, Navy would have had it about first and 10 from just outside the 10-yard line. Instead, it's a second and 22 from back inside their own territory. And that takes a lot of wind out of the sails, too. You get all excited about the big positive gain after the turnover, ball down in the red zone again, and then all of a sudden it comes back. And G.G. Green, he knows that he did not need to do that. That is a big, big disappointment, not only to his team, but in himself. Two timeouts left for Navy, Air Force with all three. This will be a third and 21 as we come up here on two minutes. And an option team does not have many plays in the playbook for third and 21. I can tell you that right now. Now keep in mind the recent history between these two teams. As Kenny and Matalolo is hot. Charge time out. Personal foul penalty on the extra point. Last meeting between these two teams that was so costly for Navy. Time out. Third and 20, Trey Miller. Looked like a broken play for a moment. Able to salvage a couple of yards, but he's still about 13 yards short of the first down marker. And a lot of emotion during the timeout between G.G. Green, who had been called for the personal foul penalty, and his head coach, Ken Niamatololo, they're still trying to calm Green down. A lot of frustration and, 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 and disappointment. You see G.G. Green right there. 
not happy with something that was probably said to him or maybe just a, a little bit embarrassed about making the mistake that he made and coach Ken trying to straighten him out trying to get his head back into it a lot of frustration there there is so much emotion on that side and it's been a very difficult year for everybody in the Naval Academy football team now, until you spend time as a penalty marker is taken they'll take the delay of game and spotted back five yards for their punter Pablo Beltran you can't appreciate Steve just how much this game means and securing that commander in Chiefs trophy you know, the coaches and players will tell you look we don't care if we go 0 and 8 0 and 9 as long as we win that hardware and beat our brothers in arms that really is the end all be all for these players maybe he's had that trophy case empty for the last two years as Beltran's punt ends up in the end zone it's a touchback Beltran's and with 57 punt. seconds left in the half Air Force gets it at the 20 Tuesday on CBS there's a new sheriff in town and new trouble in Vegas don't miss TV's number one new show Vegas Tuesday only CBS Spiro, I think one of the things that's also unique about the type of individual playing for these academies these are guys that generally speaking were not quite good enough to play Division One football. They were not recruited by the normal Division One teams, but they wanted to play football. They played football because they loved the game, the passion for the game. They knew they could play at a high level at these academies. They're generally great kids, but they have emotions, and every once in a while, they lose it too. Gets on the take on first and 10. You just give him a seam, a space, inches, and he's gonna burst through it. You mentioned Cody gets clock continuing to run 46 seconds and counting doesn't look like Air Force will use any of its timeouts gets over the century mark for a fifth straight game the first Air Force player to ever accomplish that feat that's Cobb on second and short they'll move the chains as he picks up five yards and the clock continues to run the Air Force should consider themselves very lucky at this point because Navy was in position to put some more points on the board there before that penalty. Pass complete over the middle. That's Ty MacArthur who had the costly fumble earlier. Final seconds will come off the clock. That's the end of the first. Nope, until 12 seconds. We'll get a timeout back in a moment. 30 seconds. Twelve seconds left to play. You see the target line and where they need to get for Parker Harrington missed earlier and he's really struggled as Steve has mentioned on the season just one of five on field goals attempted. Yeah, I think the target line for Parker Harrington right now is inside the 10 yard line. If you ask me maybe his range might be a little bit longer than that but uh, his confidence has got to be pretty low at this point. If you've just joined us Air Force jumped out to an early 7 nothing lead Navy was on its heels they've scored 10 straight three first half turnovers committed by Air Force and have been the story with now eight seconds to play in the second and this is exactly what Navy needed just the something to kind of hang their hat on in the first half stay within striking distance and at least feel that they can win this game in Colorado Springs you're exactly right Troy Calhoun knows Again, that his team is very lucky to only be down three points, but Navy has got to feel very good about where they stand right now. Frustrated that there's not more on the scoreboard, but in control of this football game. This is Dietz inside Navy territory. Still two seconds remaining. Down to one. As Dietz is forced out by the linebacker, Josh Tate. Navy just one and three coming in. Air Force two and two behind that man, Troy Calhoun. I don't know if Connor Dietz has the arm strength to get this ball into the end zone. He's not what you would consider to be a, a, a passer by any stretch of the imagination. He can get the ball to an open receiver. He's very athletic, but I don't think he's got the arm strength to get all the way down there. Maybe putting just three players in the line of scrimmage, everyone back. Dietz airs it out, and this one won't even be close to the end zone. Incomplete at the 15 yard line. Troy Calhoun, red hot on the sideline, wanted a penalty, but he won't get it. So we reached the end of the first half here at Colorado Springs. Your score Navy 10, Air Force 7, officials conferencing.
And it looks like we finally get to halftime. So 10-7 Navy, you score. Let's now go to Tim Brando in our New York studios. Thank you, Spiro. We've been waiting for you. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Tony Aaron and I will have all of today's action. Plus, we'll get you ready for the big SEC showdown between number three, LSU, and number 11, Florida. After this word from your local station. Set for the second half, Navy 10 and Air Force 7. Otis Livingston live on the field with Troy Calhoun. And coach, after that initial touchdown drive, a missed field goal, three turnovers, uncharacteristic of your football team. What'd you tell them at halftime to get them going again? Well, that's exactly it. Now, I, th I think we've blocked pretty well, uh, yet it takes for us. We're a full unit, and it requires us to handle the ball exceptionally well, too. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Thanks. Spiro, back to you. Well, meantime, Ken Niamatololo. Bit happier with where his team stands. Here was his speech to his players moments ago. We got 30 minutes. 30 minutes, and it's all right here. I don't question anybody's heart in here. I don't question everybody's soul in here. We just got to play smart, and all we want is the W. That's it. I don't want anybody talking smack, anything. Just finish the game and finish this game with the W. Do your job. Do your job. Get your eyes right. Spiro Ditas and Steve Berline, we know it's at stake. Uh, the winner today gets in the driver's seat to take home the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. Well, what have you seen so far? Well, we, we've seen the obvious problems out there so far with the turnovers for Air Force, but Coach Ken knows the bottom line, as he said to his team, just find a way to win this ball game. They're in great position. Should be better. They should have had more points on the board, no doubt about it, with a couple of unfortunate things that happened to his team. It could be worse than 10-7, to 7, but when you look at the stats, bottom line is that Air Force is lucky to be within three points, and it's because of that three, three turnovers right there. That is the key. And Navy is in control of the momentum and the tempo of this ball game. But Coach Calhoun knows that his Air Force team has had their opportunities. If they can protect the football, there'll be more opportunities, and they'll have a chance to, to get back in control of this ball game. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, Otis Livingston, our entire CBS crew from Falcon Stadium here in Colorado Springs. This is the first leg. In the race for that Commander in Chief's trophy. We've told you the story. Air Force has had the hardware here in Colorado Springs the last two years. Prior to that, it was Navy holding it for seven straight years, a service academy record. As Air Force kicks, Navy will field from deep in their own end zone a touch pack. Marcus Thomas on the return, and they'll have it at their own 20. Well, we talked about the mistakes Air Force made. It started with Parker Harrington's missed chip shot field goal, and then followed up by Broom Hart's first fumble for Air Force, and then the pitch that Ty McCarthy took his eyes off, and then finally Cody gets. He gets kind of clothesline, and then the ball pops out again as he's going to the ground. Those are four huge plays that have really kept Air Force from taking control of this ball game. Maybe coming in after being shut out at home by San Jose State last Saturday. Air Force with a blowout win over Colorado State a week ago. We should take a look at the first half possessions for the midship. Uh, the key, which is contrary to what it's been for most of the year, zero turnovers. You know, I had a coach in, in Carolina when I played for the Carolina Panthers, Dom Capers, he said, you play the game to kick. You either want to kick an extra point, you want to kick a field goal, or you want to punt. All three of those results are acceptable most of the time. The bottom line is you do not want to turn the ball over and give the opponent any momentum whatsoever. Miller, uh, Navy keep it on the ground. That's Noah Copeland, the fullback. Sophomore San Antonio native picks up three, and that's enough for a Navy first down. We haven't talked enough about the weather. We had snow here overnight. You woke up, there was frost on the ground. Steve, you've played in very tough conditions here. We had ice that these players had to deal with, but also the moisture, the, the wetness in freezing temperatures is very tough to deal with. Moisture is the key. When it gets this cold, you'd much rather have snow than rain because when it gets wet, when it doesn't, you know, solidify and accumulate it from a snow standpoint, it's very difficult. Here's G.G. Green on the pitch. Oh, Lost dead. it, but... Not before he stepped out of bounds, so Navy again, excellent first down yardage. Very close to midfield. And this is playing right into what Navy wants. Come down the line, 
Trey Miller made a good quick read on the defensive end coming down, got it to Gigi Green. He's got to hang on to that football. But the bottom line was it was a very positive play, picked up a first down, and Navy's rolling. This is the kind of tempo they want. They mark the football at the 47. Prentice Christian, the senior tailback, will come in. Here's Trey Miller. Well, Steve, they don't pick up yardage there, but they don't make the critical mistake. There's a penalty marker. And we've seen Miller try to force that in the past and commit the turnover. Exactly right. And another holding offense, number 75. 10 yard penalty. First down. Another very uncharacteristic penalty for Navy. That's Tanner Fleming, the center. Call for holding on that play. And we talked about it before. This is a team that in, in 2009 and 2011 led the nation in, in penalties against. That means the fewest penalties against them. And then in the one year in between, 2010, they were number two. So they're not used to all these penalties. Many more than Coach Ken Niamatololo would find acceptable. After the penalty, it's first and 20. Miller absorbing the rush, finds Copeland on a little screen pass. Out to the 42, and a pickup of five. Oh, it's cold, below freezing here. How about back in Annapolis at the Naval Academy? 80 degrees in early October. Sunny skies, we're told there, but I guess this is the football weather you want. <laughs> and certainly for a tough service academy game. Not much that'll phase these young men. Not even a 9.30 local kickoff today. Phase me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Here's Miller lunging towards the 50. Brought down at about the 47 by Christian Spears, but not before Miller goes for six. Well, Trey Miller looking very confident running the football today. He is a tremendous athlete. That pass you threw on the play before, Spiro, was the first pass Navy has thrown today. They've been able to really keep this game in, at, the, at the tempo, running the football, making a positive yards like they are accustomed to, have not been accustomed to it this year. Here we have a third and nine. Miller has shown the ability to pass. They need to get to the 43 of Air Force, not even close. Reception by Casey Bolina. First reception for the junior out of Phoenix. Tackle made by Joseph Champagne. I think uh, Navy was considering whether they should go for it again. They, they've gone for it 13 times on fourth down already this year. This is a situation around midfield where Coach Ken Niamatololo could justify it, but I think that fourth and six with a, a three-point lead, this is definitely the right call. Well, you just get the feeling the Navy is going to have to put some more points on the board. An Air Force offense that averages 37 points and 500 yards per game. You don't expect them to be held down for much longer here as they'll have it from their own 20 after a 49-yard punt. A wonderful moment at halftime. Paralympian Brad Snyder honored here at Colorado Springs, and he is standing by live with our Otis Livingston. That's right, uh, Spiro, joined now by Lieutenant Brad Snyder, uh, 2012 Paralympian, gold medalist in the 100 and 400 freestyle. First, tell us about how you were injured in Afghanistan. Well, I was supporting combat operations in the Kandahar province, and uh, we had kind of a bad day. I was rushing, I was trying to aid some Afghan soldiers who were hurt, and I stepped on a secondary uh, improvised device that was in the ground, injuring my face. How beneficial has it been for you to overcome that and to go on and win the gold medal? Also, a silver medal, medal in the 50. Uh, it was a really crazy year, and uh, I was largely able to do it by from the support that I got from my family, my friends, my support network, uh, my friends through the Navy. Everyone was really good about giving me a lot of support, so it was easy to move forward and experience success. All right, Lieutenant Bradley Snyder, thank you so much. And by the way, everyone, he is totally blind doing this. He's a true inspiration. Spiro, back to you. Well, there are no words to describe Brad Snyder and then so many of these stories of our wounded warriors that have come back from overseas. The service academy game is a tribute to them as the cadets, the midshipmen in the stands here cheering on these teams. Of course, it's all about winning 
Steve, but it's also about putting the spotlight on people like Brad Snyder. No doubt about it. That, you know, just his spirit. You could just sense in the, in the conversation mm -hmm. the spirit that that young man has. Can you imagine how tough it would be to swim without being able to see? What a what is great. Air Force trying to seize back some of the momentum. Ty MacArthur, if you've just joined us, Air Force jumped out to a 7 0 lead, but a missed field goal and three turnovers matching their turnover number all season long. Uh, given Navy a 10 7 lead, they go for 11 that time to set up a first and 10. Right over center, lunging towards the 40. And as we take a look so far, and what the Falcons have done today. Well, the, the bottom line is these four possessions, and specifically two, three, and four, have been a nightmare for Troy Calhoun and his his offense. Cannot have any more of that. This is second and four. Gets on the pitch from Beats. Appears to have enough for the first down. Tackle made by Tate. And as gets goes five. Well, what we're seeing here is, is what I would have expected out of an Air Force team with a lot of pride and intensity in this second half coming out trying to make a statement. They are all business. They are very physical up front and they're hammering that football up in there. This is first and 10 from the 44. John Lee, the sophomore, brought down, barely able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Bry French, the senior linebacker, leading tackler for this Navy defense on the tackle. I think Barry Dabney, the nose guard, was the one that got the penetration that allowed the, the secondary tacklers to get up in there. He blew into that backfield and really caused some congestion. Lee will stay in the backfield. He'll go shotgun here on second and ten. Pitch was a little bit off there on the snap. He's able to complete inside Navy territory. MacArthur on the catch. Able to move the chains again. Tackle made by Barry Dabney. The nose tackle covering some ground for the stop. The one thing you saw second effort there by Ty MacArthur. One thing you can never question on the field with these two football teams is effort. Eight yard pickup makes third and short and he didn't get there. Marker thrown from the official at the top of your picture. Cody Peterson on the tackle. West Cobb on the take. Looks like it's going to be illegal motion against Air Force. Illegal shift. Offense. Two players moving at the snap. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Tomorrow on CBS, get into the most entertaining epic adventure on TV. Catch a new episode of the Emmy-winning Amazing Race. Tomorrow, only CBS. Well, I have no doubt in my mind that Air Force is going to go for this. This is a situation. This will be the 16th time Air Force has gone for it on fourth down this year. Cody gets the nation's second leading rusher on the pitch, and he won't get there. Parrish gains the cornerback coming up to make the hit, and Navy gets it back, a loss of three. In order to stop the option, you've got to have corners that are willing to take on a block and make a tackle. Look at this. Parrish Gaines comes in the backfield too quick, jumps around the offensive lineman, Jason Kahn's, and makes a tremendous play for his ball club. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Red Lobster. Ally Bank. And by Bud Light. Their score from Colorado Springs, Navy 10, Air Force 7, 805 remaining in this third quarter. Time right now for our AFLAC trivia question. What former Navy and Air Force coaches won the BCS National Championship or the Super Bowl as head coaches? Give you a chance to ponder that. Steve, any clue? You know, I've got to put my, my serious thinking cap on for that one. You, know, you go back to those great Army teams. Yes. So much tradition with these service academies, Navy and Air Force here on the first leg. In the chase for the Commander-in-Chief's trophy, 
A trip to meet the president hanging in the balance as well. Trey Miller and this Navy offense back onto the field, up three. And Miller, that second effort, lunging close to the 43. Back to the studio and a John Hancock update. All right, Spiro, thank you. Chase Redding here is going to go 20 yards to Alex Amadon for the touchdown, giving the Eagles uh, a 24-14 to 14 lead over Army now over on the CBS Sports Network. We'll keep you posted. Back to you in Colorado Springs. So Boston College able to answer up 10. Timmy B and the guys will keep us updated on all the scores throughout the day. Second and three here. Miller again, good decision to pitch to Green, but Green has that Air Force defense closed quickly. Brian Lindsay on the tackle. It's all about assignments when you're defending the option. You can see right here the correct read made by Trey Miller, and you got one on one on the outside. You got a lot of support, and you have to beat some blocks, and you've got to have corners willing to make tackles. That right there was Brian Lindsay coming up to finish it off, number 31. And I know Air Force has struggled today to score points, but at some point you expect them to bust out. Pressure on Trey Miller to get some more points on the board. This is third and five. Miller needs to get to the 40. He's well short, about three yards, maybe four short. Lindsey and Nicholas on the tackle. I hear Austin Nicholas went to a pretty good high school out in Southern California. Yes, he did. Servite High School. Uh, personally, I think best high school in the country. <laughs> Steve Berlin, of course, former football star there. And his uh, Austin Nicholas's brother, Troy Nicholas, is a sophomore tight end at the University of Notre Dame. Standout tight end. So two brothers having a chance to compete at the highest level of college football. Servite High School, very proud. Fall start, offense. Number three, five yard penalty, fourth down. They'll give the punter a bit more room here. James Britton. The man whistled on the penalty. Clock continues to run here. We come up on six to play in the third. Ty MacArthur standing at his own ten. Fair catch signaled at the 19. And that's where Connor Dietz and company will take over when we come back. Navy in front by three. We're proud to say that it's Service Academy Saturday on the CBS Family of Networks. Uh, here on CBS, of course, Navy leading Air Force. And over on the CBS Sports Network, Boston College now with 21 unanswered. Leads Army 24 to 14 in the final moments of the first half. Now let's get you back to Colorado Springs and Spirit. Tim, thanks. Timmy B and the guys keeping us abreast of all the scores around college football today. There is Austin Nicholas, the pride of Servite High in Anaheim. And that brings us to our Steve Berline. Burley, let's take you above the line. <laughs> I cannot wait to see that. There. Oh, there it is. Steve Berline, the star winning a state championship at Servite High, named Player of the Year in 1982. Ah. And I want to talk about the hair for a moment. <laughs> I mean, that could be the worst oh. haircut in the history of America. Burley, I mean, would you like to comment? What, I'll, I'll tell you, th th it took me a long time to get that hair exactly <laughs> like that. You can't, I oh mean, that, my goodness. there are people that would kill to have a head of hair like that. I mean, this is national TV. We had to do it to you, but that that deserved a look because that was just, just good and terrible. <laughs> but it turned out well for him. Across our CBS platform of networks today CBS Sports Network and of course here's CBS Sports five yard pickup by Connor Dietz five and a half to play third quarter surprising score so far if you've just joined us Navy just one and three on the road up 10 7 against Air Force man in motion is MacArthur little pitch play Dietz now to get bowling right through the defense Tackle made by Bush. Keep in mind, Bush got dinged up with a concussion last week. Hey, you got to give him credit. He's not afraid to stick that nose in there. Had a big fumble recovery earlier in the game as well. 
This is third and one. John Lee on the pitch. Able to turn the corner, picks up the first down, tackled by Chris Ferguson after a pickup of two. And what a story. Chris Ferguson is the sophomore North Carolina native, nearly died at the age of eight, contracted Guillain Barre, a rare syndrome disorder in which the immune system is attacked by the nervous system, didn't walk for a year. His parents at one point were told that he very well could die at the age of eight. And here he is, one of the key contributors on this Navy defense. Air Force Steve nearly turned it over again. There's Ferguson. There's so many miraculous stories, guys that have sacrificed and endured to get to this point. And Ferguson's story on an entirely different level. And a starter in that safety position for this Navis, Navy defense. Deets on second and five. Not much room to maneuver. Bush on the tackle. You made a, you made a great point, Spiro. And I, I think the, the thing that should be emphasized that every one of these kids, because they are still kids, most of them 21, 22 at the most, are fighters. Not when I talk about literal fighters. They, they are people that are used to scratching and clawing, and they know no other way but to keep on going. Third and two, MacArthur on the pitch. Now past the 40, picks up first down yardage, tackle made by Bush after a gain of three. Now, Troy Calhoun kind of put it into perspective, and he says, you know, these guys know full well that, you know, a year from now, Steve, two years down the road, they can be, you know, sitting somewhere seven, 12 time zones away on a field of battle, you know, next to a guy who's on the other team today. But he says, for one day, we put all that aside and we want to beat each other on the field and win that Commander in Chiefs trophy. Yeah, the, 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 there is mutual respect on both sides, but but today it's all about coming on top, coming out on top with that W. There, there's no doubt it's about who wants it more today. Here's the pitch again by Getz. They're trying to get to midfield here. Clock continues to run 2.37 to play. Looks like Quincy Adams is hurt. Well, that was a tremendous play by Quincy Adams. That, that was very close to being a big play for Getz. Gave up his body to make the tackle. Black trivia answer question asked what former Navy and Air Force coaches won a BCS National Championship or Super Bowl as head coaches your answer Nick Saban the 1982 Navy defensive assistant and Bill Parcells Air Force head coach back in 1978 two time Super Bowl champion with the Giants Quincy Adams the injured defender a moment ago. Here's another look at the hit He comes in there throws his body in and, I, and I'm, I'm telling you if, if he didn't make That tackle it was gonna be a big run probably a touchdown for Cody gets Quincy Adams those corners have got to be willing to step up there and make a tackle on the perimeter in order to shut down the option it Looked like he had a stinger the way he's moving that shoulder Well Adams a reminder of just how young this Navy team is Nine true freshmen, one of seven is Adams on the defense. Makes a huge play there. This is third and three, gets on a late pitch, gets inside Navy territory. Has enough for the first down, needed to get to the 49. Pick up a five and tackle made by Dowling Fitzpatrick. Quincy Adams, we're told, just the stinger will return. Tough to keep these players down for very long beats. Running the option. Wes Cobb, the senior. Well, Cobb, a guy who was expected to come in and really be the star amongst these running backs before Cody Getz took this program and the nation by storm. But Cobb is well respected a player, Steve, as there is amongst this Air Force team. This is John Lee cutting and then leaping over a man at the 40-yard line. Down to the 34, Bush on the tackle. 
Well, this is a nice team. This is what makes Air Force unique. They don't always run the off. This is a traditional power toss to the right side, and Lee made a great cut, and then the, the hurdle over one of his own teammates for a nice pickup. Air Force is rolling now. Lee goes for 10. He's got 30 yards on the day. This will be first and 10. Lee again getting close to the 30. Air Force trying to make it two straight wins. That victory over Colorado State easing the pain of what was a disastrous loss in Vegas two weeks ago against UNLV. Game in which they led 28-17 at halftime. Here's the pitch. MacArthur again turns the corner. He's to the 10, to the 5. Into the end zone. A penalty marker is thrown. It was thrown by the official on the goal line right at the 10. There were some big blocks on the outside that sprung that play. During the run, holding. Offense. Mm. Number eight. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Injured player on the field for Navy as the penalty negates a 31 yard touchdown run by MacArthur. Well, let's watch on the outside. Number eight is going to be the guy called Chris Jordan called for the hold and that's right here at the top of your screen just getting a little too much jersey yep injured Navy defender is Chris Ferguson the sophomore safety we told you about earlier that's a good sign able to get up with the help of the trainers from Navy Ken Niamatololo on the field well, Ferguson in considerable pain and that look says it all You're going to see it's a big chop block right there. It's, it's actually Cody gets it gets his leg while Ferguson is up in the air and you see he lands on that left arm and shoulder and then gets kicked on top of it. Oh, that arm did not. There's going down the arm was in a really awkward position. And then there's the hold at the end of the play. Chris Jordan was holding Parrish Gaines. So the long touchdown run by MacArthur negated. This is first and 10. Gets bursting into the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> 21 yards and Air Force back in front. Well, you're going to see this is a little counteraction trap. And Cody gets, look at that seam right up the middle there. It happens, the precision with which this Air Force offense executes when they are rolling is second to none. And it just happens so quickly. Cody gets, he ran for 222 yards last week. No touchdowns, finds the end zone today. He's got a buck 67 on 23 rushes today. Parker Harrington's point after makes it 14-10 Air Force. Twenty one yard touchdown run by Cody Getz. Center of your picture. They cover 83 yards, 14 plays in over five minutes. And Getz now 167 yards on the ground. And the Falcons in front of the midshipmen here, 14 to 10. Let's go down to the field and Otis Livingston. Guys, yeah, they took Chris Ferguson into the locker room, did an examination. He has a dislocated elbow. Of course, he will not return to this football game. Spiro. Otis, thanks. It's a big loss for the Navy defense, one of the starting safeties back there. You know, when he hit that ground, the left arm was extended. It looked like it was in a very awkward position. We just hope they can get that thing back in the right, the right place. Marcus Thomas on the return to the 20. Anthony Lacoste on the stop. Well, this Cody Getz kid, he's won me over. I'll tell you, he can 
do it inside, he can do it outside. Sometimes he does a little bit of both. But you get him to the edge, he does not go down easily. You can see him ripping through tackles, and then if you give him a, a, a seam, what, any seam whatsoever, he knows how to find that end zone. He will get that ball to the goal line if he's got the opportunity. Well, really, it's just another day at the office for Getz. Why did he seize an average of 170 per game? And uh, maybe stuffed on first down. Final 20 seconds of the quarter coming off here as Getz continues to be congratulated. Well, now can the midshipman answer again? They were down 7-0 early. Scored 10 straight points, but now down four. Well, you can sense that this Air Force team now it's almost like a, a sigh of relief. They had a good, strong, very well executed drive, punctuated the by the touchdown. They've got to feel good about where they're at now. And that's the end of the third quarter. You score Air Force 14, Navy 10. We'll return to Falcon Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the Hope Depot College Football on CBS. Start of the fourth quarter, Air Force back in front, 14 to 10. Time now to take a look from our Avis action cam. Beautiful pictures here from Falcon Stadium, Colorado Springs, Spiro Adidas, and Steve Berline. Uh, Steve, we expected Air Force certainly to come back. This offense, you can't keep them down for long, but can Navy figure this out on the road? Well, you're right. This, this Air Force team averages almost 38 points a game. Navy knew, I think, coming into this game, they were going to have to do a lot better than 10 points. So not a surprise there. I think one thing that Coach Ken Niamatololo is going to have to do is maybe open up the offense a little bit because this Air Force team is going to be really focused on shutting down what they do best. That's the running game. They've only thrown two passes on the day. I think they're going to have to make some big plays in the passing game before this game is over. GG Green in motion, second and seven. Noah Copeland had a touchdown in the first half for Navy. Picks up 10 and a critical first down. And when I say some plays, really, I think when you go into a game with either Air Force or Navy, both of these teams expect to make at least one big play in the game with the passing game. Otherwise, it hasn't been a successful day. They get lucky enough to make two like Air Force did last week. That's a bonus. Miller play action. Pump faking throws to the sideline, completes to his man. And it's caught. That's Matt Aiken. Making his first appearance of the season, coming back from a right knee injury in early August. Well, this is what I was talking about, Spiro. Though that, that was an opportunity right there for Kenny and Matololo, his offensive staff. They called a big-time play-action play right there. But Air Force's discipline, Charlton Warren told us, their eye discipline was absolutely perfect right there. Keep it on the ground on first down. Aiken, a welcome addition for this offense that has had to deal with injuries, both up front to that offensive line, also to some of their talent positions. Aiken, the junior from Roanoke, Virginia, last year started 11 of Navy's 12 games. Looks like Miller wants to change the play, second and eight. Again, taking out all kinds of hits in this game. Inside Air Force territory goes for four. Tackle made by Christian Spears. Don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. The winner of this game in the driver's seat to take home the coveted Commander-in-Chief's trophy. Air Force. And these cadets have held the hardware for two years, maybe trying to get it back. Here's Green for the first down, nearly horse collared in a face mask. It looked like initially no marker on the field. But despite all he had to deal with on that run, Green with a first down and a pickup of 10. Well, you see a lot going on before the play with Navy right now. They're lining up, trying to get a... That could have been a face mask right there for sure, Spiro. Good call on your part right there. Definitely grabbing across the face. But that was Stefan Batts for Air Force. But I like the play call. 
by Ivan Jasper, the offense coordinator by Navy right there. A little change up, quick pitch to the outside. First and 10 from 39, Copeland again. He's been a workhorse today. A lot of size for the Air Force defense to deal with at 5'10 and about 210 pounds. Copeland goes for seven, brought down by Nicholas. Second and three, giving to Copeland, has another first down. Again, this is a Navy offense that has had all kinds of issues on the season. Coming into today, the midshipmen averaging just 14 and a half points, but here they are now within striking distance, down four in the fourth. What I like about this is that the Navy is changing it up. They're usually a very deliberate, huddle up every play team. They're calling all these plays from the line of scrimmage. They've changed the tempo, trying to get some rhythm and catch Air Force off guard. First and ten. This is Prentice Christian. A rare chance for the senior in this game. Goes for one. Tackle made by Champagne, the sophomore defensive lineman. We well, see one thing we haven't mentioned: the absence of senior running back John Howell from Navy went down with a devastating knee injury last week in the loss at home. In Annapolis to San Jose State. Miller is buried right at the line of scrimmage, takes another nasty hit. That time it was Alexander Hansen. A tremendous play by Alexander Hansen right there. Just they were Air Force did a great job stringing that play out. And Trey Miller, I saw on film the last couple weeks, he was pitching the ball in this situation. That's a good decision because that would have been a definite fumble in my opinion. That ball would have been on the ground. Trey Miller did the right thing taking the hit and not giving that football up. Third and nine from the 25. Miller wants to keep it himself but he's going nowhere. Midshipman needed to get to the 16 and he's about six yards short. Tackle made by Lindsey. And Miller has been taking shots all day. Looks like he's hurt again. Clutching that left leg. You, know, you mentioned earlier in the telecast, Spiro, that he hurt that ankle last week and uh, finished out the game. And, and, and he's twice gotten up limping today. That time he got took the shot in the ribs earlier, it looked like he hit, hurt his ankle as well. So tough moments here. The starting quarterback, Trey Miller, being looked at on the field. And now it's time for our Geico Game Recap. Scoring summary, Air Force, an impressive opening drive. Connor Dietz to Drew Coleman straight down the field for a huge touchdown throw to give the Falcons a 7-0 lead. And the midshipmen answering back. Slowly getting their offense in gear. It's been a struggle all year. Long field goal by Sloan. And then the touchdown giving Navy the lead. Noah Copeland punching it in. But Air Force answering with Cody Getz, second leading rusher in the country. 21 yards scamper. And that's where we stand 14 to 10. But now the concern on the Navy sideline, the midshipman starting quarterback, Trey Miller, off the field as they will attempt a 41-yard field goal by the true freshman, Nick Sloan. Made one earlier from 39. This one has the leg, and it's good. That is not an easy kick to make in these conditions. Temperatures below freezing in a one-point game. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by AT&T. Sonic. Geico. And by Scott Trade.
Air Force 14, Navy 13. Navy getting back into it a little closer. 12 plays, 56 yards. Nick Sloan, 41-yard field goal to cut the lead to one. Well, nobody knows the game quite like the quarterback. Don't miss Phil Sims, Rich Gannon, and my partner, Steve Berline. Also special guest, Dan Fouts, getting into the mix. NFL Monday quarterback, Monday, 630 Eastern, only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. You guys didn't have enough star power. You had to bring Dan into the mix. Hey, best That's darn show watch. on television. Best show on television right there. We'll be watching. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun with it. It's, it's been uh, really, really good time spending time with Phil Sims, Rich Gannon, uh, Adam Shine, our host, talking football, really analyzing games in a, from a perspective that you don't get a lot of time, a lot of different perspectives on the quarterback position, which has been very interesting. Well, speaking of the quarterback, there's Trey Miller, a left ankle sprain. We're told his return is questionable. Otis Livingston keeping us updated on the sideline. Third member of our broadcast team. Anthony Lacoste and the return on pass to 30. As we hit the 931 mark in this fourth quarter. Now the Red Lobster presenting today's scholar athlete. And it's Chris Jordan. Look at that GPA. A little bit better than Burlines at Notre Dame, biology major. Chris aspiring to become a pediatrician. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the Air Force General Scholarship Fund. I, I want to know how you assume that that's better than my GPA. <laughs> well, you let, don't me have that documented. let me rephrase. It's much better than my GPA. That's, that's, well, I'll say that. And as Cody gets well over the century mark, and he's approaching 200 yards at this point. And Air Force looking to build on a lead. Back to New York and an update. This Heisman watch, fellas, is uh, something you'd have to take a look at. Matt Barkley leads USC back on Thursday to four unanswered touchdowns. The Trojans rally to win. Braxton Miller is going to try to help Ohio State tonight against Nebraska. And E.J. Manuel and the Knowles will visit NC State. Back to you. Uh, Nissan Heisman watch as they go to the airways. Drew Coleman for his second touchdown catch of the afternoon. Dante Strickland on the throw, 54 yards, and Air Force pushes its lead to seven. Well, of course, we, we get away from right before it happens, but you see it was an option pitch to Dante Strickland, and then Drew Coleman slips behind the safeties for the second time today, as we said. Every game, these teams want to try and get at least one or two big plays in the passing game. That's the second huge play for Air Force through the air. Parker Harrington on the point after it's good. And Air Force giving itself a little bit of breathing room now. Up eight with 9.03 remaining. Tim Brando back in New York. A reminder over on the CBS Sports Network, Army is mounting a comeback against Boston College. Larry Dixon takes it in from seven yards out to tie the game at 24. Let's get back to Colorado Springs. Spiro and Steve Burla. Tim, thanks. Army 0-4 coming into today. But, of course, they still have their eyes set on the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. Second time today, Steve, we've seen the Navy secondary get fooled. And once again, they get burned. Well, it's the same guy. Right here is Dante Strickland. And then down here at the bottom is Drew Coleman. But what I want you to watch is right here. Trevez Bush, for the second time today, steps up. Reed, there's a great job pitching the ball right there. Dante Strickland. Trevez Bush right here. It's, he still keeps coming even after Drew Coleman runs right by him makes for an easy throw over the top but I'll tell you impressed by the arm strength of Dante Strickland to get that ball out there on the money accurately to Drew Coleman huge play Travis Bush kind of a nightmarish day for him to this point the one thing that we talked to the defensive coordinators about what is the most difficult thing in defending the option it is that your defensive backs have got to be eye disciplined they cannot react to what they see with the football. They've got to react to what they see with the offensive linemen in terms of setting up for a pass. And we should point out that Bush is playing today despite suffering the concussion last week in the loss in Annapolis to San Jose State. So give him credit for gritting through that and just trying to play today. Maybe up against it, down eight. 
With just over nine minutes remaining. If they're a catch, they'll get it from their own 20. Later today, it's an early SEC showdown when Zach Mettenberger and the Bayou Bengals of LSU tangle with Jeff Driscoll and the Florida Gators. Down in the swamp, the hoopla begins with the autotrader.com college football today. I'll expect a huge defensive battle there. Two great defenses. And it's coming your way later on CBS. Keenan Reynolds, the backup quarterback, onto the field. Trey Miller, a left ankle sprain, as we told you, return questionable. But for the moment, it's the true freshman out of Tennessee, Reynolds, throwing on first down, completing to Brandon Turner. First reception for the senior wideout out of Washington State. They pick up six. Well, how about that coming out first play for the freshman? And a throw, uh, seven of ten on the season coming into today, throwing the football. So, a lot of co a lot of confidence for Coach Ken letting the kid come out and throw the football two times in a row. This is second and three. They find Green out of the backfield. Green has some real estate inside Air Force territory, and finally forced out of bounds by Spears. Huge pickup by Navy, and they're back in business. You're going to see one of the most strange things I've ever seen as Gigi Green goes running on the sideline. I want you to watch right there, number 42 for Air Force, 43 for Air Force. That's Jared Jones was standing with his back, did not even know that Gigi Green was coming down the sideline, and he ran right past him. 35-yard pickup for Green gives him a first and 10 from inside the 35. This is Copeland. So Keenan Reynolds, the freshman quarterback, replaced Miller in the fourth quarter in that loss last week. But this is the first experience, Steve, that he has been in in a one-possession game. He's played in all four of their games coming into today, but the first real test with the game still hanging in the balance. You can say, see, Trey Miller wants to get back in there, but not, not sure he can handle it or capable of doing it today at this point. Second and seven, they complete again. Right at the sideline, that's Casey Bolina. Pick up of 13 yards, and maybe moves the chains again as Miller looks on. Well, we should point out, too, Spiro, that this Keenan Reynolds kid, Coach Ken Niamatololo, all the offensive coaches we've talked to, they really like what this kid has shown at a very early stage in his career. Let's take a look now at the Verizon red zone. Navy down 21-13, 7-19 remaining. gives to Copeland. Again, the winner of this game takes a huge step in securing that Commander-in-Chief's trophy. Ken Niamatololo, first coach in the history of Service Academy football to win the trophy on his first two years on the job. And trying to bring that hardware back home to Annapolis. But they'll need a win today. Reynolds, excellent fake. He's inside the five and in. How about that drive from the true freshman? 15-yard touchdown. And now the decision, do you go for two with 6.35 left? You definitely go for two. No doubt about it, because one point or two points, you're still a field goal shot. A field goal still right. wins the game for you to get a chance at it. What, what a great play by Keenan Reynolds. I'm impressed. I love the way he throws the football. And then he can show he takes it to the house as well. Trey Miller, what a team guy that is. Happy for his young freshman backup getting in there playing at such a high level. Well, there was talk this week with an injured player on the field from that Air Force defense. Talk this week, Steve, on whether or not there would be a quarterback change with the turnover problems that Trey Miller had. But, you know, to put the true freshman in this kind of an environment for his first career start, Service Academy game against an Air Force team that's very, very strong. Ken Niamatololo felt that it would be too much, but boy, how impressive did the freshman look on that drive? Well, they, they contemplated hard about starting Keenan Reynolds because of Trey Miller's documented issues, well-documented issues, but you're right. They said that this stage might be a little too much for Keegan Reynolds and Keenan Reynolds in terms of starting the football game, but we, I did get the sense that if things didn't go very well with Trey Miller, and they have gone very well with Trey Miller today, that we would see Keenan Reynolds in the ball game. Unfortunately, it's due to injury today, but he showed he could step up and, and answer the bell. 
Don't play the game right here. They're a goal for two on the tie. Noel Copeland in the backfield, a freshman from the gun. First time they've attempted a two-pointer on the season. Reynolds, the pitch to Copeland, lunges and he's in. And the midshipmen have tied it here in Colorado Springs. One of these teams will move one step closer to the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. The true freshman Reynolds on a 15-yard burst. Biggest play of his brief career. And then Noah Copeland tying this game at 21. Trey Miller, consummate teammate on that play after injuring his ankle. Looking on, we are tied. Wednesday on Survivor, shifting alliances and a devious scheme leave the tribes in turmoil. Don't miss it all new Survivor. Wednesday, only CBS. Well, we got a good one for you here in Colorado Springs. All tied at 21, six plays, 75 yards. Keenan Reynolds, the true freshman on a 15-yard run. And that's where we stand. Well, I want you to look at something that happened on that last play. Why, look right here. Nick Fitzgerald, the defensive lineman, he comes across the line and runs down. No one blocks him, and Reynolds has the football and runs right past him. Fitzgerald doesn't even know he has the football. Look at that. He's like, oh, he thought he gave it to the fullback, and all of a sudden Reynolds is so quick and such a good athlete, he took that ball up inside. Nick Fitzgerald is going to be kicking himself for just not sticking his big paw out there and knocking him down, at least, at least slowing him down. Fitzgerald, one of the young defensive linemen that they're so high on here. But right now, Navy tying the game at 21. Noah Copeland, the man who punched it in on the two point conversion. With 6.35 remaining. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, Otis Livingston. Our entire CBS crew with you. Anthony LaCasse will return from a yard deep. Takes a hard hit right at the 20. Jonathan Gazelle. There's been huge special teams today. Cody gets once again stealing the show. And then the flea flicker, Strickland out to Coleman for the 54 yard touchdown. And the freshman Reynolds answering for Navy, then Copeland on the two. And we are tied at 21 here at Falcon Stadium. Total yards by the half. Starting to pile up. Again, a Navy team that had all kinds of issues offensively, the turnovers. There's 14 points per game through the first four weeks. There's the pitch on first down. Gets. You just never see him go down, Steve, against the first tacklers, always making guys miss. That time picks up seven. And if I'm Navy, if I'm a Buddy Green, I tell my team right now. I don't care what else you do right now. We have got to get number 28 on the ground. Cody Getz is killing them. They should have five or six guys getting that football every single time. Get, make somebody else beat you. Getz is 11 yards away from his third 200-yard rush game of the season. That's John Lee. We've seen him extensively today in relief of Getz. But now, having said that, Spiro, unfortunately, the problem is that Travess Bush has gotten too aggressive and come up to support the run a couple of times, and that's where two of Navy, two of Air Force's three touchdowns have come because of his over-aggressiveness and giving up the big play in the passing game. Both teams with all three timeouts remaining. Clock continues to run, 5.30 remaining. This is Connor Deeds from the gun. Close to the 34-yard line. And now a huge play coming up as Dietz picks up four. Matt Warwick and Josh Tate on the tackle. And these fans kind of sitting on their hands here. This will be a second and six. And 
There's Parker Harrington. All Mountain West kicker a year ago. Dante Strickland. Now the winner of this game moving one step closer to securing that trophy. Commander in Chief's trophy. Air Force has held it here in Colorado Springs the last two years. Maybe a service academy record seven consecutive years prior to this run. This will be a third and two as we come up on four minutes. Dietz fakes the pitch, completes to his man out of the backfield. Excellent play call. They had the defense fooled as MacArthur with the catch and first down. Well, you know what? This is a great play call by the Air Force Falcons. They fake the sweep that Cody gets, get everybody going to the left side, and a nice, firm throw from Connor Dietz to Ty MacArthur for the conversion. Keep it on the ground on first down. Pick up just the yard. Matt Warwick on the tackle. Warwickstad, a West Point graduate. Spear, I'll tell you another thing that's going to really be an interesting decision for Troy Calhoun. His kicker really struggling right now. One of one of five on the season, Parker Harrington. If they get in a situation where he's got to make a decision to kick a field goal, well, that's going to be a very tough call for Troy Calhoun. Cody gets lining up behind Dietz. When Dietz fakes the hand off the pitch, but they bury him in the backfield. Strickland was the man chopped down. And what a defensive play by Matt Warwick, the senior linebacker. Matt Warwick just was shot out of a cannon here. He was running to that pitch before Connor Dietz even thought about pitching the ball. You know, that was good, very good example of assignment football. Navy, the Navy guys' reaction, they were able to beat the blocks and get to their responsibility and defended it perfectly. Mitch Shipman from Annapolis enjoying that last play. This is third and 12. Beats completes to MacArthur at the 50, but he'll be about three yards short of the first down. Well, usually this will be fourth down territory, but with 2.26 to play, tough decision for Troy Calhoun. What do you do here? I, I found, uh, Troy Calhoun, mm. uh, the, the, he's going for it. Now, they, they might try and draw him off sides as well. Fourth and three from the 50. Yeah. He's going to take a timeout and think about it. Both teams with all three timeouts as it stands right now. Play clock down to one. And Calhoun will take his first of three timeouts. What a finish. We're tied at 21, Navy and Air Force. This week, Dave's all new with Kevin James, Selma Hayek, and Monday, don't miss Jack Hanna's Animals, followed by Craig Ferguson. Only CBS. Strategy here. What do you do for Troy Calhoun, Steve? Tied at 21, a minute 51 remaining. There really is no decision to be made. I, I, I would think Troy Calhoun would be justified if he wanted to go for it to try and win the ball game, but the, the right call is the punt here. You, if you don't make it, you give Navy a short field with a good kicker. You got to try and pin him back deep and count on going to overtime. David Baskett, the junior punter on the kick. Fair catch signaled. This one takes an Air Force bounce inside the 15, and they'll mark it at about the 13-yard line. The other thing to keep in mind here, Trey Miller, Navy starting quarterback, leaving the game earlier in the second half with a left ankle sprain. His backup, the true freshman, Keenan Reynolds, came on and led them down the field, a touchdown to tie the game with a two-point conversion. And Ken Niamatololo, whether the decision is based on the Miller injury or just how impressive Miller, excuse me, Reynolds was, Steve will stick with the freshman. Yeah, well, Reynolds was three for three on his only drive, ended up with a touchdown, looked very comfortable, but this is a very precarious situation. Minute 40 left, Air Force has two timeouts left, and you're backed up inside your own 15-yard line. I would expect him to try and pop a couple run plays before taking a chance in the air. First and 10, Copeland the fullback. 
has had a huge role today. The touchdown in the first half. Navy's first points of the day. Navy, keep in mind, all three timeouts left. A minute 20 remaining. And now the clock running down here. A minute 12 and counting. So it doesn't look like Kenny and Montalolo will try to force anything here. The last time these two teams met, last season in Annapolis, that thriller in overtime decided on that a really a blocked extra point. Spear, I think Navy uh, Air Force took a timeout before the punt. I believe their timeouts are all up now. We're going to find out. This timeout, is a timeout, Air Force. It's been 30 seconds. So a timeout taken here. 46 seconds to play in a tie game. Navy and Air Force tied at 21. 46 seconds to play. Fourth quarter. Navy with three timeouts. Air Force down to its final stoppage. Keenan Reynolds, the freshman, on in relief of Trey Miller. The pitch to G.G. Green. Air Force there. Green unable to really turn the corner. Four-yard pickup. Air Force. It's going to be a 30 second time. That'll be the final timeout for Troy Calhoun. 39 seconds to play in Colorado Springs. Navy's offense on the field here, fourth and two. Midshipmen with all three of their timeouts. Air Force, no timeouts at their disposal. 39 seconds, we're tied at 21. Yeah, they're not going to run a play here, no chance. Keenan Reynolds, the freshman quarterback, trying to draw them off sides. Play clock down to one, and Ken Niamatololo will take his first time out. So the Navy head coach not really wanting to take any chances. Appears as though they'll play for overtime at this point. But Air Force will get a chance at least here, as Navy will have to punt. Spiro, I stand corrected. I, I thought that Air Force had used their timeout earlier. Uh, very, very good job by Troy Calhoun of using his timeouts, using the clock wisely. And their defense stepping up now, forcing Air Navy to punt from deep in their own territory. They're going to get the ball back with pretty decent field position here and a chance to maybe get in a field goal range. Ty MacArthur stands back at his own 44. Pablo Beltran, what a 63-yard punt against San Jose State last week on the kick. From his own 10, this is a short kick fielded by MacArthur. An excellent field position for Connor Dietz and company. Just short of midfield. With this game tied at 21, this was the missed field goal from 27 yards. Parker Harrington earlier. And you have to think that's running through the mind of that young man. Well, his, his confidence cannot be very high. With all that's at stake in this ball game, He's going to have to really do some, some serious mental convincing of himself to get ready to make that kick. He's one of five on the season, missed the chip shot earlier. He's going to have to show that he can he can get that clear out of his mind if he gets the opportunity. The Air Force, no timeouts. This is first and ten. Nice running room on the opening play by MacArthur. Inside Navy territory, Quincy Adams on the tackle, a pickup of 12. Clock does stop here. Again, Air Force out of timeouts. Steve, what the strategy here? You have to think they want to stay on the sidelines with no timeouts. Oh, they definitely want to. There are no, no timeouts. So you got to put the ball up. I, I, I think right here, you got in the. If you send MacArthur out to the flat right there, there's nobody to stop it. First and 10. Beats are keeping himself here, but now they have to hurry back to the line of scrimmage inside the 35, a pickup of six. Clock continues to run. Air Force again, no timeouts. Career long kick by Harrington, 45 yards, as we showed you earlier. That came last season. Looks like a Navy defender is hurt. Crowd booing here. 
thinking that this could be gamesmanship perhaps by the senior linebacker Keegan Wetzel. But it actually works for Air Force's benefit. That's uh, not helping Coach Ken at all. He'd rather have that clock run. Well, there's Harrington. We mentioned the struggles he's had this season. He was the best kicker in the Mountain West Conference a year ago. Selected to the all-conference first team. Now in his senior season, the native of Clearfield, Pennsylvania. Now you never want to be the kicker in these situations. Well, but if you're the kicker, you have to want to be the kicker <laughs> in these situations. Everyone else is nervous. I know a few guys in the in the record books, you know, some guys in the NFL that have come through many, many times in the years because they relish that opportunity. And heck, if this young man isn't looking forward to that opportunity, uh, he shouldn't be on the field, you know. Well, the rest of us could sweat it out. That's right. I, I wouldn't want that job. Well, Keegan Wetzel, their best defender off the field here. And what is the biggest play of this game? Tied to 21 with 11 seconds to play. And they're going to try one more play here. Again, no timeouts. Beats has to throw towards the sideline. It's incomplete. So third and short. And they're going to come onto the field with Harrington and the field goal unit to win this game with five seconds left. This will be a 56-yarder. 51 yards, excuse me. Career long for Harrington, 45. This will be 51 officially. David Basket, the holder. And now Ken Niamatololo. Navy, it's going to be a 30 second. Take a timeout, try to ice Harrington. Make him think about it. Five seconds on the clock. Air Force trying to keep the Commander in Chief's trophy here in Colorado Springs. This is the first leg in the chase for that hardware. What Parker Harrington has to think about right here, Spiro, is, is nothing more than just good, solid contact on the ball. Can't get caught up in how far it is. Can't get caught up in what's happened so far this year. He's got to think about hitting that ball in the right spot with good, solid contact and let the rest of it take care of itself. Parker Harrington had to be convinced to go try out for his high school football team. Soccer was his first love in Pennsylvania. Biggest moment of his career here. And Niamata Lola will take timeout. Maybe. Another timeout. Three, 30 seconds. Timeout. Well, both of these clubs, of course, still have to face Army. Navy will take on a gentleman from West Point, December the 8th. Game you'll see right here on CBS. That game in Philadelphia. The Air Force will take on Army in about three weeks on November the 3rd. That game will be on CBS Sports Network. But all eyes on Parker Harrington, 51-yard attempt. It would be the longest of his career by far. A senior from Pennsylvania lines up, basket a hold, and it is no good. And for the second straight year, Navy and Air Force are going to overtime. Well, he, he pulled it left again. He did it earlier in the game on the short one. He's got something in his mind. He's trying to get, he's got to pull a little bit left from that right hash mark, but uh, just in a little bit of a, an overkill on that cut, on that pull. And, uh, you know, never had a chance. You got to feel bad for Parker Harrington. He wanted to come through for his teammates more than anybody. Troy Calhoun looking on from the sideline. In the meantime, Ken Niamatololo can't bear to watch. And what a job by the midshipmen to fight their way back. Down 7-0 early. It looked like Air Force was going to cruise early in this game. Navy stormed back. And having to deal with adversity as well, their starting quarterback, Trey Miller, 
Going down in the fourth quarter with a left ankle sprain. And you summarized it earlier, Spiro. We'll, we'll see the coin toss here. But last year's game very similar with Navy clawing back after being back down by a big deficit to force overtime and then losing the heartbreaker. Air Force has won the toss. They have elected to play defense. We'll go this direction. Navy will have the ball first and 10. So Navy's offense onto the field as we head to overtime. Navy and Air Force on CBS. Well, something about Navy and Air Force, these games always seem to go down to the wire. We are headed to overtime. Overtime rules in college football, both you know, ball will start at the opponent's 25-yard line. They'll keep possession until they score or fail to make a first down. The teams will have an equal number of possessions. And on the third overtime, teams must appoint a two-point conversion after a touchdown. Well, one of these teams will get a little bit closer to that hardware, the coveted Commander-in-Chief's trophy. It has resided here in Colorado Springs with Air Force for the last two years. Navy with the first possession. They'll start from the 25. The freshman Keenan Reynolds in the biggest spot of his brief career. On the take, picks up six. Tackle made by Nicholas. This this Keenan Reynolds, he looks very comfortable out there right now. Got up smiling after that five-yard run. Uh, does not look like uh, this moment is too big for him. He, he's very much in control, has been since he's been on the field. But a lot of credit should go to that gentleman, too, Trey Miller. Ran for over 100 yards today before having to come out with the ankle injury. Miller went down in the fourth quarter. This is second and four. Copeland has the first down inside the 15 as the fullback picks up five. Last nine meetings between these two teams, Steve, decided by an average of five points per game. And these coaches both knew it. They, they told us going into the game, hey, forget about everything else. All the experts might think this is going to be a blowout, but neither one of these coaches felt that way. Ken Niamatololo, he, he knew that his team would show up. He, as long as they could protect the football, that was his biggest concern, and they've done that today. Niamatololo has won the Commander-in-Chief's trophy twice. First two years in the job, this is first and 10. Midshipman keep it on the ground. Four yards on that play, G.G. Green. A three-year starter, senior from Columbia, South Carolina. Navy and Air Force were in overtime, first possession of the extra session. As the chess match continues between these two coaches. Copeland is set back on second and six. Copeland over center. Trying to inch towards the five. Alex Means on the tackle. Temperatures hovering around the freezing mark all day. There's Means. Heart and soul of the Air Force defense. Huge third down play coming up here. The mids need to get just inside the five for the first down. This would be a great time for a halfback pass, wouldn't it, Spiro? Maybe. Each team getting one timeout in overtime. Kenny and Matalola will take it right here. You just wonder what's going through the mind of Reynolds. But boy, has he looked like a cool customer here. Final timeout for the first overtime period. So third and three. As Navy needs to get to just inside that five-yard line. Steve, what do you draw up here? Well, I think it'd be fantastic, and specifically because these two teams are so run-oriented. If you had, which I know Navy has to have, 
some sort of a halfback pass. You saw what it did to, to D Navy defensively earlier when uh, Air Force threw that halfback pass for the touchdown. I think right down here in the red zone, very easy throw for a halfback. If they can pop a tight end or pop a, a receiver to the corner of the end zone, it'd be a great call. But realistically speaking, I think you're going to see Keenan Reynolds running the option here. Third and three from the Air Force seven. Here's the pitch to Green. He's got the first down right at the goal line. And Navy will have it first and goal. James Chambers on a touchdown saving tackle. I'll give some credit to the left side of that Navy line. Brian Paulson, the left tackle. Josh Cabral, number 65, and the lead blockers. Given Green a chance to get this ball to the edge and turn it up. What a great play. Very well executed. Nice job getting that ball inside the one yard line. Again, both teams guaranteed a possession, so Air Force will get it. Tied at 21. This is first and goal. Reynolds into the end zone. No signal yet. It looked as though the snap was fumbled for a moment. Navy signaling nothing from the officials yet. And now they say touchdown. Rolling on the field is a runner. Fumble the ball forward into the end zone. Recovered by the offensive team. So the fumble touchdown. into the end zone and the tackle. Jake Susan, the sophomore from Brookhaven, Pennsylvania, oh recovers God. for the touchdown. My goodness. <laughs> the freshman. Fumble the ball in the end zone and Navy escapes. I will review all the talk about the Navy turnovers, the fumble problems that they've had. And then how's this for irony? Biggest play of their season. They fumble, but they recover. They will review here. Jake Zuzik able to fall in the football. Okay. You can see very clearly that 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 ball never got into Keenan Reynolds mm. hands. It popped into the end zone and, and Steve, he just fell on it. Yeah, didn't even look that Zuzik as his head was kind of jarred back. But he even knew the football was underneath him at that point. It, it truly is more times than not. I believe based on my experience that in those piles a lot of times a person that recovers the football or that comes out with the football is not actually the one that recovered the football that that thing can change hands at the bottom of the pile very easily but it definitely it looks like the navy definitely fell on it replay officials still looking at it here you could see zuzik's right hand See the tape and the pad on his right hand kind of clasp it right before he pulled away on that last that last view. Important thing to note here is that the call was a touchdown there on the field. Is. So they'll need conclusive evidence to overturn. The rolling on the field and a touchdown stands. The midshipman out in front. And now the pressure squarely on Air Force. Now keep in mind, last year in overtime, Navy scored first again, but missed the extra point. Alex Means, the Air Force linebacker, got a big mid on it. And that was the turning point in the game. This is Nick Sloan for the point after. Beltran, the holder. And this time, no such mistakes by Navy. Well, this was the scene here, overtime between these two teams a year ago. Wild finish, Navy taking a six-point lead. Chris Proctor on their one-yard run, but he was called for unsportsmanlike after the play. They pushed it back 15, and John Teague's 35-yard attempt block. Air Force would punch it in. That game in Annapolis, Air Force on the road, winning it in a thriller. And route to their second straight Commander in Chief's trophy. Now the midshipman feeling confident. Up seven. So Air Force starts at the 25. Josh Tate 
on the tackle of Cody Getz. You know what the midshipmen should be feeling, Spiro is lucky. But that ball was recovered, not by Air Force. Uh, that's a coach's nightmare. Ken Niamatololo, when he saw that ball go down on the ground, I'm sure his heart stopped, but it worked out for him. Cody gets over the 200 yard rushing mark for the third time in five weeks. This is second and eight. Beats creeping towards the 20. Picks up three, brought down by Wes Henderson, the senior defensive end. So the game coming down to this possession, Air Force must score. It'll be third and five. Deets on the pitch, and they bury gets for a loss. Matt Warwick got there first. And now it comes down to a fourth down play with Navy up seven. Well, that was tremendous penetration by that Navy defense. Look at how nervous Coach Niamatololo is. Kneeling down at the far end of the field, the 25-yard line. Air Force needing to get to the 15. It's fourth and six. Dietz going to throw it. Batted down. And Navy moves one step closer to reclaiming the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. in the senior with the biggest play of his career batting down the pass as we take a look at the player the game presented by Russell Athletic Cody gets 204 yards but something tells me gets won't be looking at the final stats in this game as Air Force beaten on their home field in overtime and the midshipmen avenging their loss from a year ago And now it's time for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Game-winning touchdown, Keenan Reynolds, the freshman quarterback, fumbling the snap, recovered. And what a finish, Jake Zusick falling on the football in the end zone. And then the midshipman defense making it stick. So for Steve Berline and Otis Livingston, this is Spiro Dinas saying so long from Colorado Springs, where again the final score, Navy 28, Air Force 21. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. We'll send you to Tim Brando with theautotrader.com. College football today, right after this message and a word from your local station.